Morning everyone and welcome to our online service on the 26th of April 2020. So glad as always you could join us. If you're here for the first time, my name is Ben and I'm the vicar at Mayersfield and Nutley uh, Churches. Today we're thinking about pressing on, carrying on uh, with the Christian life, looking to keep on growing in our faith even when times aren't easy. And we'll be looking at the uh, letter of 1 Peter uh, together. And as I was thinking about this, um, it got me thinking about um, part of the Bible from Hebrews, which is looking to those who have gone before us, people of, of faith. And it says uh, this about uh, them. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have come back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared a city for them. Uh, to live a life of faith is to trust in the promises of God, to look forward to what God has promised and therefore in the present to keep on going. So my prayer that for each one of us today is as we reflect on who God is and what he's done, that we would be able to keep on going in our Christian life, especially at this time of Easter, because Jesus is alive. So let's pause for a moment, then I'll pray. Then there'll be some words for you to join in with and we'll sing our opening hymn. Let's uh, bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you that you are a God who has made promises and keeps his promises. Help us to learn to live by faith. And this morning we pray that you would encourage our faith and live by the promises you have given us with the assurance that Jesus is alive. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, please join in the words in bold. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. And let's sing, come people of the risen King. bring him praise come all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace from the shifting shadows of the earth we will lift our eyes to him where steady arms of mercy reach to gather children
full or empty hands find the riches of His grace. Over all the world His people sing, sure to show we hear them call. The truth that Christ through every age, our God is all in all. Rejoice! we now have a time of confession together, a chance for us to be honest with God, uh, to confess our sins, to confess that we have not always loved God and our friends, families and neighbours as we should in, the way, in things we have thought, said and done. So as always, there'll be some words on the screen. Please join in the words in bold. But first, a moment for us to pause Maybe there are things that come to mind we need to be mindful of as we confess our sins together. So please join in the words in bold. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ our Saviour. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit our guide. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Great, well our next hymn uh, has been recorded for us uh, by the Nutley Church Choir, um, recording at home and then it's all been arranged by uh, John Crossman, so really grateful. So enjoy this by listening and singing along if you wish um, as we sing We Have a Gospel to Proclaim.
the time to grab a, a Bible if you have one and today we're looking at 1 Peter chapter 1 uh, beginning at verse 13 and uh, this morning Claudia is bringing our Bible reading so over to her. Today's reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1 starting at verse 13 so 1 Peter 1 starting at 13. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. And remember that the Heavenly Father, to whom you pray, has no favourites. He will judge or award you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began, but now in these last days he has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ you have come to trust in God, and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth, So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. As the scriptures say, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And that word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the most popular films of all time is The Shawshank Redemption. It's a pretty brutal film about the life of someone called Andy Dufresne, who is wrongly imprisoned for murder and treated terribly in prison. And throughout the film, there is this pressure on him to conform to prison life to become, as they call it, institutionalised. But this doesn't happen to Andy. It nearly does, but it doesn't. And the reason is that he has hope. There's this wonderful scene where he's just been in the hole, I think it's called, where he's been on his own in the dark for two weeks, and he he comes out from that time, and he's he's kind of okay, and his inmates are like, well, how? And he says, well, I I was in there, but I I had Mozart with me. I could hear, play his music in my head. It's, it's something that no one can take away from me in my head and in my heart. It reminds me that there's more than just stuff made out of stone. And Red, played by Morgan Freeman, goes, what are you talking about? And, and Andy says he's talking about hope. Now for Red, that's a terrible thing. He says, look, let me, let me tell you about hope. Hope is a dangerous thing. It can drive a man insane. Hope has no place in here. He's given up hope. 
He's lost sight. But Andy doesn't give up hope. And by not giving up hope, he makes a tremendous difference in the place in that prison. He doesn't become institutionalised. And in the end, of course, his hope is rewarded as he breaks free. 1 Peter, our passage from the Bible, is written to Christians who are scattered and isolated. They're not in the situation they would want to be, surrounded by a culture that doesn't believe and under great pressure to conform and to lose sight of the hope they have and all that God has done for them. So Peter is writing this to say, look, keep on going. Don't give up. And it'll be a wonderful passage for us at any time. Especially as we live in a culture that's sort of perhaps more and more thinking differently to to the way Christians are called to think. But especially now, because we are isolated, we're in our own homes, we can't gather together. It would be very easy for us to fill up our, our minds with the things of this world and to slightly lose track and to slip back and slow down in our Christian life. But Peter would say, no, no, don't do that don't do that. In verse 13 he says, so prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. That's so or therefore so important. He's just described to them all that God has done for them in Christ and he says, look, live off the back of that. Therefore, look, prepare your minds for action. Even though you're in this situation, think, prepare to think deeply of the things of God and what he's done for you. Let that fill up your thoughts and and, and nurture your heart. And he says, exercise self-control, which, which can be translated, have sober judgment. Yes, that probably means don't get drunk. The Bible tells us not to do that. But, but probably more generally, it's saying, look, think deeply about the things of God. And that's going to require you to have real discipline and self-control. And not to allow your time and your mind, your, your thoughts and your affections to be clouded over by things that are contrary to God. That will change the way you live and the way you think. That's the thing about getting drunk, isn't it? A, a drink's okay, but drunkenness changes our behaviour and the way that we think. And Peter's saying, no, dwell on God, dwell on the things of God. Keep on going. Don't slip back. Keep going with the Christian life and seek to make a difference where you are. From this passage, I think there are three things woven into it that we can reflect on. Uh, To continue the illustration of having a drink, three things that we can top up our glass with that will enable us to keep on having hope, living the Christian life and make a difference in our current situation however difficult it may be. The first of these is to remember that this home is not our true home. Peter has already written earlier in the chapter that because of what Jesus has done, we've been given a heavenly inheritance, a home in heaven being kept for us that no one can take away. It's ours. And he says uh, in verse 13, don't put your hope in this life alone in its worldly aspirations and ideas. Put your hope, you read, all your hope in the grace of salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. He says, Look, you know that this is not all there is. Those who think that this is all there is, they're, of course they're going to live a worldly life. But you are a heavenly citizen. Heaven is your true home. He says then in verse 17 that they are to live as temporary residents. This is not where you're going to be forever. This is no longer your true home. Whenever I go abroad, which obviously doesn't happen at the moment, I like to look at a map of the world and I look at where I am, wherever I am in that country, and I look at where home is. And I always find it slightly amazing. It's like, wow, I'm so far away from home. That's where I'm going to be heading back to. And that's why I don't live quite the same as everybody here, because I'm a, I'm a British citizen. That's where my home is. Well, for us, we remember that our true home is in heaven. That's a great comfort to us because right now living in this place is not very easy. It's very distracting in hardship, actually, sometimes. We can lose sight of where our true home is. 
But Peter says, don't live for this world. You are a heavenly citizen now. <clears throat> Two things there from for us then. First of all, we can have real confidence in that home. In verse 21, we read, through Christ, you have come to trust in God and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. He says, you put your hope in God because uh, Christ has been raised from the dead. So he's saying, You've invested your your hope, your life in God. And that's not a bad investment. If you watch Dragon's Den, you know that the the well-known rich businessmen and women, they have to make a decision to invest in the ideas that are set before them. And they're only going to do that if they can see that that idea is going to come through in the end. Peter is saying, look, you put your hope in God and that is a good investment. Because Jesus has been raised from the dead. And that means that your heavenly home is secure. He will come back. He will take you there. Don't be afraid to invest all your hope and aspirations into the heavenly life. Because it's secure. And I've already mentioned it. The second thing that it encourages us to think about is that we can and should think differently. Because we're just temporary residents here. We are heavenly citizens. Now, in this time of isolation, when actually our current home may feel quite difficult, maybe quite tempting to put our our hopes in worldly ways and to think as the world thinks about our situation at the moment. But we have hope of heaven. That is our true home. Remember, this home is not our true home. Secondly, to keep them going on, he says, look, I know that you're where you are. But don't slip back. Remember that your father in heaven is a holy God who's called you to a holy life. He says, verse 14, as they hope for Christ to return. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. Now that word holy means to be set apart. And in the Bible, God is actually said to be holy three times. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. He is completely other and he is perfect in all that he is and all that he does. And he calls us as his chosen people to be set apart for him. To live a holy life. Now the measuring stick for the way that we live is not from within ourselves. It's not from our surrounding culture. It's very easy when we are immersed in a culture that thinks a certain way to believe that that is right. But our measuring stick for the way that we should live is God. His holiness and his holy ways what is revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes that means uh, standing apart from the crowd, standing against the tide. He's saying, Peter's saying, don't live as those who do not have the same hope that you do live. You may need to stand and live differently. If you've ever been by the sea or by a bay and watched the tide come in, you'll notice that all the boats will sort of sweep around in the direction of the current. And you'll know pretty quickly if one of those boats isn't uh, anchored or tethered properly because it will just be carried away with everything else. But a boat that is anchored, that is tethered, will be able to live differently. It will be able to stand up against the current. Our lives, our way of thinking, our way of doing is not to be as the world thinks, but is to be tightly tethered to the holiness of God and his way way is revealed to us. We are called to be holy because God is holy. And that is true all the time, no matter where we are. And that sort of thought carries on in verse 17 remember that the heavenly father to whom you pray has no favorites he will judge or reward according to what you do so you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residence 
he will judge or reward you according to what you do. Now that's not talking about final judgment here. It's talking about a sort of an ongoing um, process of judgment. It's about God caring about the way that we live now, wherever we are. And as a, a heavenly father, uh, he, he cares about the way we live. And we should care about pleasing him. And as a good father, uh, he will grant us and we will discover spiritual rewards as we seek to please him. And we may find his discipline in our lives um, as he seeks to bring us back on track. And so wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we're always living in the presence of our Holy Father in heaven who cares about the way uh, that we that we live. The great thing is here, it says that he has no favourites. That's good, isn't it? It means there's no such thing as the golden boy or the golden girl in the in the church, the one who gets the extra pat on the head from fa- our Father in heaven. We're all love the same. And so God cares about the way we live uh, all the same. And he judges us all fairly. So Peter is saying, look, you may be in a different place to where you'd like to be. But God is holy. He is your father. He cares about the way that you live. So seek to please him and live in the reality of his presence. And there's a real encouragement uh, later on in the passage uh, with all of this. In verse 22, he says that you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. It's talking about a changed life. It's saying that as you obeyed Christ, you were finding your soul cleansed from sin. So it's saying that as we seek to obey the Lord, we are discovering life as it is supposed to be lived. Now that can be a real battle. We all have those moments where we're faced with a choice. Do I live righteously or go my own way? It's, it can be a real battle. But actually in those moments when we battle, when we fight, when we ask God to help us to obey the truth, we find growth there. Growth in our Christian life. Growth into the people that God always meant for us to be. So in this time, are we still seeking to be holy as our Father is holy? Are we living in the presence of the knowledge of God's uh, fatherly care? And are we trusting even now that to seek God, even when it's really difficult, is to live the path of life and to grow in our Christian life? doesn't matter where we are, we keep on going because our Father is holy and he wants us to live differently for him. So to keep on going, we remember that this home is not our true home, that we live in the presence of our our Holy Father who cares about the way we live and wants us to be holy. And finally, we are to remember the cost of our salvation. Peter gets them to remember that this new life that has been opened up for them this new hope, this relationship with God, this opportunity to live a new way was not won for them by their own efforts, their own bright ideas. He talks about it in the language of ransom. We have been ransomed. We have been set free for new life. And as he says in towards the end of verse 18, it was not this ransom was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. No, our new life with God was paid with something paid for with something of infinite value. He says in verse 19, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Now the only way that we could be rescued, ransomed, saved, set on this new path was by Jesus spilling his precious blood for us. And so Peter is saying, remember the value of the thing, the person by which you were saved. And so I think he's saying, you will treat that thing, you will treat Jesus and his sacrifice as precious, as of great value. 
when you carry on living for him, when you don't take this new life for granted. I suspect most parents have said this when their children are growing up and being a bit disrespectful and, and not pulling their weight. They're, you treat this house like a hotel. Now, there's nothing wrong with a hotel, but to, to treat our home like a hotel is to devalue what our home really is. It's to devalue the love and kindness that our parents and carers show us. He says, remember that the only way that you have life is because of the precious blood of Jesus. So value it. Treat it as precious by living and seeking a holy life, even now. So three things for us to keep going. Three things for us to top up our, our glass with, to keep us going, living the Christian life. Firstly, we remember that this home is not our true home. That our Father, in whose presence we always live, is holy and calls us to a holy life. And finally, the cost of our freedom, of our new life, was the precious blood of Jesus. So let's treat it as precious by the way that we live. And just to finish, I want to read those last few verses that we haven't touched on. He's saying, live a new way. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. As the scriptures say, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And that word is the good news that was preached to you. We have been given new life that lasts forever. Because we have received the good news, the word of God that lasts forever. It's a hard time for us, but let's keep on going. Let's keep seeking to grow and live differently for our Lord. Because of all that he's done for us. And because of the new kind of life that we have been given. Let me finish with a prayer. Father, we pray that you would help us even now to seek you and to grow in our Christian life. May we fill our thoughts and the affections of our hearts with all that you have done for us and all that is true for us. May that give us great hope to live differently, knowing that this home is not our true home, that you are holy and that we were rescued by your son's precious blood. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now we're going to have... Um, time of prayer. This morning Ray Kennedy uh, from Nutley has uh, prepared some prayers for us. Uh, so he's going to lead us now and after that we will then join in together with the Lord's Prayer. But over to you now, Ray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, not because we are righteous, but rather our need for your forgiveness for the dark things in our lives. We seek your love, your grace and your mercy. We are sorry for our shortcomings. Shine your light upon them and give us strength to tackle our failings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all creation, we thank you for the gift of your creation the magnificence of the night sky, the wonder and brilliance of a renewing spring season. Help us to see beyond our fears and worries at this time, to witness the glory of the world you made. We have failed in our stewardship of your earthly kingdom. Guide us to play our part in conserving and protecting our finite resources and to balance the needs of our planet with the needs of a fast developing world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for your worldwide church and all those across the globe who love and trust in our Saviour, your Son, Jesus Christ. We know many are still far from, from you and we pray that you empower each one of us with words and actions that lead others to your loving embrace. 
We pray for both our churches and although we are physically far apart, we are spiritually united in you. We lift, lift up our vicar Ben and his family as they adapt to new forms of communication. We pray his services are providing for all his parishioners in this period of lockdown. Encourage him in his ministry and may he bring meaning, depth of understanding and joy to our virtual worship. Though we are many, we are one body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we live in turbulent and uncertain times where truth is often difficult to discern. We pray that you reside in the hearts and heads of those who lead the nations of our world. Grant, O oh Heavenly Father, to those in power a route out of this crisis. Guide them to deploy the skills and talents of our doctors, nurses, carers and scientists throughout all countries to protect the vulnerable, to care for the sick and to find a vaccine that will deliver a universal solution for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we ask that you bring comfort and reassurance to those in our community who are impacted by the virus. For the lonely, we pray you visit your Holy Spirit upon them with the knowledge that you are a companion and a comforter. For the frightened, hold them close. Reassure them that all their fears and worries can be unburdened through faith in you. For us all, encourage us when we are apart from our church family. Renew us every day with hope and keep us focused on your redeeming love. We especially pray that you have a room in your heavenly kingdom for our sister in Christ, Ruth Leach, who has been called home. Bless her and all those who grieve at her passing. And we ask that you keep all those that we love and have loved in your safekeeping. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask God Almighty, that you release us from the imprisonment of fear and anxiety and uplift us with hope. Help us shine for you in the days ahead. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Ray. We now continue in prayer, first of all, with the collect, the special, special prayer uh, for this Sunday. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Great. Well, uh, we're nearly at the end of our time uh, together. So glad you could, uh, could join us. Um, Morning prayer continues uh, this coming week on Monday, Wednesday and Friday at nine o'clock. William King's leading that this week. 
And uh, as always, please do get in touch. You don't need to be in need, just be nice to hear from you. And um, I hope uh, that you're all okay. So we sing now our final hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. final prayer for us as we go. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. God bless and see you soon.